Uh, I had my own company. We would design and equip dental offices. Um, and I know what you're probably thinking is, do they even have dentists in England because of <laughs> our teeth, right? <laughs> All right. Let's roll. So what is photogrammetry? So photogrammetry is definitely kind of a buzzword in dentistry right now, but it's not a new technology. All right, we've been using photogrammetry basically since the 90s. Um, our boss, uh, he's a gentleman by the name of Horse Buyer that uh, Phil just mentioned. He has two PhDs in photogrammetry, so he kind of knows his stuff on, on, on the subject. But when you um, look at photogrammetry back in the 90s, what they would basically do, or what they would use it for, is cars and aviation. So they would put the targets onto a car, take all of the records, and then crash the car, and basically see how it copes in an accident to make sure that you're all safe. So here we've got a Porsche 911 uh, with the targets on the, on the side of the vehicle. When you talk about photogrammetry, and you'll see this when we do the hands-on today, the target type is very important. So you've probably heard these referred to as dominoes before, the scan bodies that we use. Um, there are different target types depending on the type of photogrammetry that you're using. So back in 94, they were using single surface um, targets or scan bodies to take their information. Up here, this is a PIC. Everyone heard of the PIC uh, photogrammetry unit? This is from the Micron Mapper. They essentially have a flat surface when you're scanning. The challenge with that is when, you, when you're scanning implants is if you're scanning a single flat surface, how does the software know if the implant's leaning forwards or leaning backwards? Right? With the iCam system, we're introducing multiple sides. So they were using stereo photogrammetry back in the mid-1990s. But then in 97, that's when they realized if we have multiple surfaces to this scan body, I'm going to have better accuracy and better precision. Right? So this was in, back in 97. So history of the company, um, we actually started off with desktop scanning back in 2007. And uh, throughout the years here, you'll see uh, the different desktop scanners that we've had as an organization. So that's kind of where we, where we started out. But Horst, who is our CEO, realized that when you're scanning a model like this, uh, there's a lot of what we call tolerance stacking. So I live in Phoenix, Arizona, right? So if you take an impression for a patient in Phoenix and it gets thrown into the back of a courier's car to go to the lab, what happens to that impression? Change of shape, right? So then it gets to your lab and you pour that impression up in stone. What have you now introduced? Yeah. Another tolerance, right? So what Horse realized is that if, I'm, if we're taking a PBS impression, pouring that up in stone, and then we're scanning that, how much accuracy and precision have we lost through what we call tolerance stacking? Then if you mill or you print, you're introducing another tolerance, right? And ultimately, if we're looking for the best possible precision and accuracy, why not take this desktop technology and put it into a handheld unit, which is what we see here. So that was really the goal that we wanted to introduce, is the ability to take those implant positions right in the mouth. So in 2013, Horst worked with the WICAP Institute in uh, Utah, probably familiar with this uh, facility for training dentists on implant placement. First case was done in 2014. I won't play the video for you. <clears throat> and notice, this is very, very important. Um, on this slide here, ICAM 40 with four cameras. In order to be true photogrammetry, you need at least three cameras. Okay, and we have four, four moving cameras. And that's very, very important, and I'll come on to that in a moment. Actually, no, I'm gonna come on to it right now. So, we've got our multiple surface target, we've got our four cameras, and we're going to orbit around the patient taking the information. With what we call stereo photogrammetry, so PIC, Micron Mapper, they have two cameras, only, and it's, and it's scanning a, a flat surface. So what that basically means is you're really limited in the amount of data that you can collect. So if you look at the iCam, we're taking about 61,000 views or, or reference points when you're imaging in the mouth. With the other technologies, you're taking far fewer. And so it all comes, and I'm not an en or I am an engineer, but not to this level, uh, but it all comes down to redun redundancies. The more redundancies you have, the better um, accuracy and precision you'll have. Why is this important? We want to have the most passive fitting prosthesis possible. Right? That's the whole goal here and why we're looking to use photogrammetry. So this is, and you'll see this today with Phil. Um, here we're basically orbiting around the patient, taking information, capturing those 60,000 data points, ensuring that we have the exact X, Y, and Z um, axis for those implants. And ultimately, 
the reason why this is important is the mouth is a difficult environment to work in, right? You've got blood, you've got tissue, you've got uh, saliva. There's a lot of different things going on. And so to ensure the best possible precision and accuracy, that's why this level of technology and this, um, this workflow is so important. So there are some, some precision studies that back this up. I'll touch on this very uh, quickly. So we talked about this a moment ago. You've got your typical uh, um, verification jig. We can put scan bodies into the implant positions and scan with an intraoral camera. We've obviously got grammetry, right? OptiSplint, has anyone heard of sort of OptiSplint and those types of, you know, Nexus, those types of products. You've got stereo photogrammetry, which is your PIC and your micromapper. And then there's a company called InstaResa that have got a product where they, they have a scan body, but they've basically, uh, they put impression material around those to try and minimize inaccuracies. And then ultimately we have photogrammetry. So there's a lot of different ways to capture this information. Harvard did a study back in 2019 where they compared intraoral scanning to photogrammetry. Okay, and they looked at two things, precision and accuracy. Does everyone know the difference between precision and accuracy? So this is very precise, but it's nowhere near the bullseye. So it's not accurate, but it's very precise. It's clustered very uh, close together. Here the accuracy is a little bit better, but it's not as precise, right? So we're obviously looking to hit the target every single time. So what they did is they did um, 20 patients or 20 arches, and they basically scanned each arch five times with a three shape, five times with an ICAM. And the results were pretty uh, outstanding, uh, alarming, crazy, whatever we want to call it. So uh, the virtual Scheffel test in the prosthodontic community is a, is a common test that, you, that you'll do to verify the precision of a prosthesis. Essentially taking that hybrid, um, screwing in one of the implants, and verifying that you've got contact the whole way around the arch. If you look at the maximum discrepancy with the intraoral camera, three millimeters off. Do you think that was a passive fitting prosthesis, right? Now, why is that? The reason is that with an intro scanner, and when Dr. Thanos and I were discussing this last night, it's user dependent. We could all take an intro scan in this room today of a model, and you'll have a different outcome every single time because of the order in which you scan. You go occlusal, buccal, lingual, someone else scans differently. You're stitching images together to build a model. And so you're not guaranteed that level of accuracy and precision every, t every time. Especially in the bloody site especially in a bloody site. With photogrammetry, we could all take a scan with the iCam today, and I would bet my mortgage that our accuracy or our precision was, is within 10 microns. Now think about that, a human red blood cell is about eight microns in diameter. So that's the level of accuracy and precision that we're, that we're talking about here. So very quickly, I'll kind of I'll wrap up here. So um, Again, last night we were at dinner and, and doctor asked me, you know, what's so important for your company? And I said, accuracy and precision. That's everything that we do, everything that we're focused on. So we did a study on a, um, an eight implant model. We did it with the iCam, with the micromapper, with the desktop uh, scanner, and with an intraoral scanner. And we looked at different uh, types of um, um, measurements that you can take. So obviously, you've got an MUA, you've got a scan body sitting on top. One of the most important things is to verify that the scan body is actually seated correctly on the MUA. This can introduce a lot of inaccuracies. And so that's one of the reasons when you see our design, why we've uh, built it in this way. So when we looked at the different uh, functionalities, and we've got the scale over on the right side of the screen there, you can see with the stereo photogrammetry and an intraoral camera, you have a lot of inaccuracies within, within the scan. Um, versus the iCam and the desktop scanner where um, obviously highly accurate and highly precise. I'll go forward to the, uh, this one here. So basically what, what, we, what we do to test is we take two scans. We've got uh, eight implants on the model, we scan it once and then we scan it a second time. In theory, those two scans should be identical, right? You would hope. The challenge is that that isn't always the case. And so when you look at the outcomes, again, with it, the intraoral camera, sometimes 20 microns of inaccuracy. And across the whole arch, that obviously adds up. And that's why you can have a non-passive fitting prosthesis. So won't go too much into the, into the data, but I, I wanted to show precision and accuracy because we were talking about it at dinner last night. This is kind of why we do what we do. Our goal is to guarantee you a passive fitting prosthesis every single time. Uh, and we believe that comes from 
obviously ease of use, learning curve, things of that nature, but this is what is most important, the precision and accuracy of the technology. And you'll get to see that today, and hopefully you'll get some hands-on and get an opportunity to, to see that for yourself. Any questions at all? And uh, the, the last thing I'll leave you with, oh, this is the virtual Sheffield test very quickly. Uh, when we tested with the stereophotogrammetry, you'll notice that over a 20 micron scale, when we screwed in one implant, you had contact on this implant and no contact the whole way around the whole arch. So it really speaks to the importance of that precision and accuracy. And I'll finish with this. If we play the passive fit game, which team do you want to be on, the, the blue team or the red team? Alrighty. Yep. Thanks, Gary. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Yep.